Fluent in both Mandarin and Japanese, United States Consul General to Hong Kong and Macau, Kurt Tong, has a strong connection to Asia. But how did this come about? Well, everybody's personal history is a, a series of accidents, right? And in my case, it was my, my father going to teach in Japan. Uh, and so I went along and started studying Japanese and then Chinese. And then when I learned more about these societies and countries, then I got interested in being involved in how the United States relates with these societies and countries. And learning the local languages has been essential, something the State Department spends a lot of resources on. It's really important to be able to hear people the way that they're thinking, um, and not just through translation. Having assumed the role in August of 2016, the Consul General has been witness to many key changes in the SARs. Well, I think that I've seen two special administrative regions quite different from one another, but each of them being very successful in utilizing the one country, two systems framework to be successful in growing economically, in, in providing a good livelihood and a good environment for their citizens. Uh, and so from the U.S. perspective, we concentrate on deepening our cooperation with, uh, with, with Macau and with Hong Kong, and, and, uh, and, and we feel like it's going quite well. But culturally, historically, linguistically, uh, they're, how, how they came about as special administrative regions is, is rather distinct, and, and, and I've found that to be very, very uh, fascinating. Um, learning about those differences as well as the similarities. So the, um, uh, our interests in, in each are, are both similar and different. And while the regions differ greatly, also when compared to the mainland, the diplomatic style is consistent. Uh, it's very similar. Uh, you know, diplomats do the same thing all over the world. We, we um, learn about the places that, where we're living and, and we um, represent our, our uh, values but also our specific interests um, and, and we promote business, we promote educational cooperation, um, cultural activity and, uh, and it's, it's a very, um, it's rather consistent around the world. You have to adapt your, the, the, the tools that you use uh, to the environment. And the environment is greatly different in Macau, being home to some huge investments, in particular into integrated resorts. Uh, I think the U.S. Um, invested integrated resorts, as they call themselves, um, and the others as well, not just the American ones, have been very successful, maybe even more than everyone anticipated. Uh, but, uh, and, and this, this um, excellent mutually beneficial relationship that they've been able to develop um, but with the Macau government and, and, the, and the host people of, of Macau uh, has been extraordinary um, and, and I think very much mutually beneficial. From the consulate perspective, as you said, these are big investments. So they're very capable and so we find that actually our main uh, support that we provide to the um, to the integrated resorts to the casinos is we we help the American citizens get new passports uh, we register the births of their babies um, we give visas to their employees when they're going to the United States for for training or for exchanges and so um, they, they get, in a word they kind of take care of themselves um, but but we but um, like everyone else we enjoy coming over here and and and, and um, you know, going to the shows or, or other activities here. But aside from the large-scale American businesses in Macau, how else does the consulate facilitate bilateral trade, in particular in the context of the greater Bay Area? Our consulate, we have a very active and capable Commerce Department team uh, that focuses on both Hong Kong and Macau. And, and with respect to Macau, some of the key interests are um, promoting the smart cities concept, and helping U.S. companies get involved in that. Um, we have very early discussions with some American hospitals that they might be interested in, in, in uh, helping provide solutions in, in, in Macau. Uh, there are energy projects, a variety of things that, uh, that U.S. companies are interested in. And then <clears throat> kind of as a, as, a, as a corollary to the entire entertainment business and tourism business in Macau, um, our agriculture team is also extraordinarily active in, in here. 
um, promoting U.S. beef, U.S. wine, cheese, you name it. We're trying to sell our, our good stuff here in, in Macau. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a supermarket for the U.S. as well as for others. And you know, we have 30 million people coming through town each year. Uh, all of them are in a good mood because they're in a, this cool place. And so they tend to spend more than they might at home. But right next door, with the growing purchasing power of the middle class, is a huge market to be tapped. Uh, one of the main goals that we have for Macau and Hong Kong is to serve as a advertising point or a, or a demonstration point for American products so that when people come to Macau or Hong Kong from, from mainland China, that they see all the, all the cool American stuff that they can buy even back when they're back home. For U.S. companies hoping to get in on the action, a number of fields are proving highly successful. I think fintech is one, but any, all of the technology businesses are very interested in, in figuring out how they can use both Hong Kong and Shenzhen, for example. Um, but also in, in logistics and transportation and consumer goods, there's really quite a wide range of, of things which could be uh, pursued even better on a regional basis. Uh, rather than jurisdiction by jurisdiction. And maximizing the individual advantages of each one under the one country, two systems framework will be key to integrating into regional growth, says the Consul General.